yeah, welcome everyone. It looks like the, the recording is on, so let's let's get started. I think looking through some of the comments, I think there's been some community feedback and I agree with this, that we should probably spend a, a good amount of time here on the future of DIG, uh, DIG Council setting up a, a path forward for, for some independent governance of DIG. So I think that's what we're gonna be talking a lot about today. Um, but then just wanted to kick it off real quick with a, an update on the options and extending it to, I guess, three months now. So that is underway, but Wizik, do you wanna give us uh, where we are on that now? I, I think where we left off the last D Dig Dojo was talking about extending options out for a longer period. And really, I think an inflection point that was broader than just that, it was really kind of trying to formulate or organize how to best move forward with Dig. and. As many saw, BIP69 is out. Poe put together uh, it funds emissions through the remainder of the year. Part of that is also DIG. I think in commensurate fashion to that, I think the way I'm thinking about this is like, you know, we've got emissions funded through the end of the year. As we've talked about with options, I think extending that out to a similar path. And then also the formation of a council that can help. There's been a lot of really, by the way, I think there's been a lot of really good ideas thrown out there in terms of some possible next stages for DIG. It could be anything from doubling down on options and like funding more rewards to it and creating a better UI um, to looking at something like Ohm and forking it on Avalanche and then minting DIG LPs, uh, bonding DIG LPs to create something entirely new. Um, but all, all the ideas are really good. And I think at this point, we need to figure out which idea is the best. And I don't think that's a decision that I can make Wasabi, Tritium, or anyone here can make on their own. And we want to make sure that it's done by the community because I think that's the most, been the most powerful asset for DIG is that it's been a very community-led project. And so really points one and two are kind of very hand-in-hand in, hand in here. It's the options and the DIG council. And so I think picking up from where we left off, um, just to reiterate on it. Go ahead, Tritium. Sorry. Can we just go to like budgets and emissions really quick, right? Because I didn't do the math, but it looks to me like the current emission schedule basically spend all the dig in the treasury. So then there's nothing to do options or anything else. And like somebody pointed out that like Poe had crept in there that maybe we would mint more dig, right? But I think like with an emissions thing passing tomorrow, I don't have a real good overview of like the treasury and our spending and like planning. And I'm a little bit worried that we're like overspending or, or we're, we're allocating more dig than we have. So like, has any, if we looked at that at all, or like before we say, hey, emissions are settled, like if we actually dealt with that? Yeah, Poe po did reach out to me. Um, I, I, Tritium, what I can do is I can share something back to this group today. I just need to update the balance sheet for what what's recently probably happened in the last few weeks with TCL and stuff. Um, but it, your, I mean, your your point is not invalid. Like we are already close in terms of what we have and don't have, but we do have the funding for the emissions that have, have been planned out. Now, whether or not we have funding for other things is another question. Again, kind of goes back to the point of what is the next best thing for Dig. But really quick, did we already decide to fund drops more, or is that still also pending? Right. And then my question is like, do we have the funding to do both? So nothing's because been funded for addition. tomorrow, right? There's a bit tomorrow that's going to set this into place for the next 13 weeks. And then really like it, we shouldn't just come up with a bit the next week to change it. So I think being that the emissions switch is on Thursday, right? It maybe makes a little bit of sense to talk about that and make sure that like we're set up that we're, we've finished this quarter well, and that like actually everything is well set up going into the next quarter right before then we talk about like how we're going to change dig which i think is a great conversation and maybe it's better for the dojo yeah so so to be clear i don't think my intent was to talk about how we could or should or couldn't change dig or anything like that it's so much it's much more of setting up the framework to allow the community to decide the next best course but to your point let's pivot back to that really quick i i don't i don't foresee there being a bip that's going to be passed like I, I, I actually am trying to, let me, let me be very transparent here. I think what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to set up a more council driven approach to dig versus a one or two man approach today. 
So whether or not the we should set up a BIP to fund options, whether or not we should do any of those things, I think we would leave up to, you know, that process to decide. And by extending options, like there's a very pragmatic reason why we need to extend options. The reality of it is that we're allowing people 60 days to claim their current dropped. And we still haven't, we still need to claim the short tokens by the multi-sig so we can fund the next round and then also claim any unclaimed rewards so we can fund the next round. So until those things are done, we, we just have a very real, and the reality of it is we can't fund the next round if we've got other rewards for the current round locked up. And so like at a minimum, as we talked about the last, the last dojo, 60 days at a minimum is what we would need. But then the reality too is that I mean, Tritium, you've mentioned this many times as I have too, redundancy of the last round and the fact that we basically minted collateral only to claim your options to then go and then uh, receive them through Badger Tree. It was kind of like, well, why don't we just do it all in one fell swoop? And so trying to extend that out further so we can give people options that they can hold for a month or 60 days was also the other part of this. And so uh, what I'm trying to say is by extending options out, and by getting some more formalization set up here, we give the community a better chance to decide if they want to do these things. And to your point, Tridium, I can help provide more clarity in terms of what the actual treasury balance sheet looks like. So people have the data they need to then make the decisions they think are prudent for the product. And do you think you can get that out like in the next few hours? Because again, there's a BIP. There's this, it's the one thing that I don't know how to vote on, on the BIP, right? Like everything else I, I can look at under missions, I, I can understand the set, but I don't really understand like what I'm voting for in terms of the treasury and emissions uh, when I look at, at that dig thing. So if you can get that out, that'd help a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll make it a point to get that out in the next few hours, Tridium. Cool. Thank you. And so I, I, again, we can talk about this. I don't mean to, to move past it, um, I just uh, I, I wanted to talk about the reasoning for you know going back to the reasoning for extending the options, and then um, and then also talk about like how to go about setting up something like a council. But I, I've talked a lot. Let me pause for a second. I mean, is there anybody else that has anything else they want to say or discuss? I don't want to consume all the time. I mean, you clearly heard from my end what I've kind of see the focus as right now but I could be wrong. So let me let me be quiet for a minute and see if anybody else has anything else to add or say. Yeah, I mean, personally for my, like, I think we've talked about the extending the options to three months a bunch of times. And I think everyone is on board. I mean, I'm certainly on board with it because it gives us more time to, it frees up resources of the team uh, because it's been so labor intensive to set up the claiming of the options. So I think that just makes sense. And given that we need to, invest time and thought into the dig council and you know future of dig and getting getting that resource and, and figure that stuff out i think you know it's kind of like over determined that we need to extend the options here's what i need to do actually i need i need to and this is what i owed the community last call and before um my life became a bit more complex i i need a i need to send out something i can write something up on the options um and post it just in like the general forum there's nothing that here needs to be voted on. Nothing mechanically changes. It's just stretching it over a longer time period. But I can offer a lot more specifics on it there. And we can generate conversation um, in a much more transparent way. And I think that's on me. I, 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 I'll, similar to what Tritium said about the balance sheet, um, this piece is on me today too. So let me, let me share that. And then everybody can have a lot more visibility into it. Um, one of the reasons why Omnifarious uh, can speak to this better than I can, but one of the challenges too, if you think about creating an options program that you want to run kind of like with multiple cycles at once so that they almost overlap, is you have to create a much more advanced, like you have to have a, right now what Omnifarious has done with dig.finance is pretty amazing considering he's not a front end dev. He's basically a, a, a hacker who likes to create stuff for the community and has found a way to use his skill set to create something meaningfully valuable to the community to help us, you know, with dig. But if we have to start creating, you know, option rounds that feed off one and the other and potentially have unclaimed rewards and, you know, new rewards going into the next, you probably have to create a bit more of a robust front end. 
um, UI that can like share, you know, different rounds and, you know, um, content and, you know, even the snapshot process that Casudo updated tremendously so that we can use immediately now, but also could integrate that in as well. There's a lot more work that could be done. So it just, it, it would require probably more effort, but also create more transparency. So in terms of the dig council, then I think my, I, I, I'm curious to see what everybody thinks. I, I don't want to overcomplicate this and trading you probably have the most expertise on this, just given the fact you've been kind of the father of the whole 2.0 governance uh, paper that's been written. And again, if anyone hasn't read it here, please do so. It's very well written and, and really important to the Badger DAO as a whole. But do you have any advice on what the most like simplified but direct path would be to kind of help set up a... And to be clear, this council, I think, is more of like a discovery organization that's trying to look over the next three, four months to try to put together kind of the next path forward in this regard? So, well, I, so the, the, the most challenging thing with getting a council together is to get, find people that are gonna actually be on the council and participate and bring something, right? Um, like even with the council of badgers, like we've got a few councilors that are pretty active, but most of them aren't, and depending on the issue, whatnot. So like what I saw with DIG, was at the very beginning, there were a lot of different ideas. There was a lot of excitement. It's a typical thing that we see when we go to RFF, right? And then like out of kind of this natural need, like some sort of a leader, which was kind of you arose, right? And, 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 and pulled away most of the noise and kind of managed to focus on some, us on something and said like, okay, we're doing this now, right? And at the same time took on to yourself um, dealing with it all. Right. But now that kind of means that it's like yours, that, that in the end, like people are more likely to defer to your decision. Right. So now it's kind of like your baby supported by the community. I think the only way that you're actually going to get, you know, somebody's got to own it. Right. Like there's got to be one or two people that are going to own this thing, that are going to run, that are going to push going forward, that are going to push the council forward. And so, like, I don't know. If that's going to continue to be you as and you want more community engagement, I think you really need to find a few new owners that have some new ideas and some energy to bring those forward. Right. Or I think we got to throw everything back into the like, OK, like, let's let's step way back and like rethink what we're doing and, and try to like rebuild consensus and interest and energy around some idea. But I think like that's kind of the reality of like getting the the, you know, the great kind of whatever is out there right like this whole periphery like getting some focused concentrated energy that you can actually direct somewhere and do something with uh, I may, i'm not sure that helps but that's the sense i get no it definitely helps i think um I, I think we talked about this last time too and i probably should have started with this it's, i'm sorry i think i think similar to so we've got emissions which i'll share the balance sheet going out until december you know, the plan is to extend options out till November, December, three, four months, whatever it is, which by the way, I think even the amount of value options unlocked right now is like 31 cents per option. So it's not, it's not that this month is unlocking anything substantial at the moment. I think the idea was to also create, I don't want to say council, I'm just called a group of individuals, which I would be a part of, to be frank. I'm not saying this is not going to be including of me, but I, a group of individuals that I think the task at hand would be coming up with essentially a, a viable business plan. And, and, and to be clear, that business plan could be status quo. It could be continue to do what we do today. Like there's no, I want to be very clear, Badger Dow is not asking to like figure out a way to annex dig. The point of it is, is just say like whatever the next 2022 dig looks like, I think we have to just be, we have to put together a plan in terms of what it's going to take to maintain and support. And so it could be that we want to run options and we need to create a business plan to um, fund a dev to help create a better front end UI um, or fund some money to do this. Or it could be to fork home on Avalanche. It could be to um, do nothing at all and keep dig just as it is on Badger Dow. But the point of it is, is to have some sort of business plan so that the team can have so much, some more 
understanding and transparency in terms of what the expectations are, because again, I don't want to speak for Tritium on this, but uh, I'll, I'll try to, yeah. and you can probably jump in, is that it's, Dig has been a, like, nobody, nobody knows what Dig is going to need until it's needed. And then it usually probably draws away from whatever the core focus of the group is at that moment in time. So just trying to create better visibility, understanding so that it's a much more, you know, uh, yeah, viable product. I guess the thing is, in my experience, like a committee isn't going to do that, right? Like a group of people isn't going to do that. Like one or two leaders in a group of people are going to do that, right? But like you have to start with somebody that has an idea and empower them and then provide like support and help and advice. And then depending on how, you know, much of other people's ideas they're able to incorporate, you end up with a group of people that are truly invested in it, right? So like, if you look at this NFT thing in Vibes, right? Like he started doing it, it was his idea. He's been the, the, the force pushing it forward. And as more people are like enamored by it, it came on. If you look like 1500 tried to kind of really take ownership of like the, the, the stabilized vault, right? And had like a bunch of ideas there and those were proposed and like, it kind of like fizzled out. And so like when that happens, I think what we ended up doing is like, you know, 1500 is like, okay, well, like I was interested. I tried to do something. It didn't go anywhere. Like now, cool, I'll go do something else, right? Like nobody, nobody feels the need to do this. And so it's actually about building that engagement first that then your core committee is going to come out of, right? And then if you want to tack on a few advisors or other voters or people on top of that, you can do it. But like it has to start as like a group of people with some shared ideas that they're all like excited about and interested about and want to like put energy into, right? And then like we can pay, right? That's the other thing is like if there are people that are doing and pulling the stuff forward, like it's not an issue for us to like, you know, pay some bounties or stuff. But like that, that's what I see missing now that maybe was there before was you know like a month ago there were a lot of people in the dig dojo with a lot of different ideas and there was passion about it and now it seems like everybody's become pretty like complacent and is just looking for like somebody to tell them what to do next and i think the only way to break that is maybe to like <laughs> say okay like let's let's not say we're going to do options right like let's just start over and the community needs to like come up with something new i don't know how to do it but like it's hard to spark community engagement it really is here just trying to to put these ideas together i mean i think maybe one way to move this forward like i think what we really need is just a deliverable and like maybe it's a bit of an ask to say like since the future of dig is uncertain it could go a lot of different ways like to ask people to jump on a council when it's not sure you know that's kind of like this open ended thing like i think we kind of need just like a scoping or decision document for dig that has okay these are the possible futures you know a do nothing b do the ohm thing c do the you know 1500 badger liquidity rebasing thing like these are all different directions it could go all of them have different costs and timelines and everything like i think we need something that like a includes someone from the badger core team that can say like hey you know this is a great idea but it's going to take all of our dev work for three months and that's just not workable right so like we need a, you know to study the ideas the possible futures and also the resources that would be required with that after having looked at Weezix balance sheet of, of what resources are available for dig because i don't think we can really like make any decisions without looking at the costs that are associated with each one so i mean it it seems to me like it could be a nice discrete little bounty for Tritium to say like, okay, you know, work on this dig scoping document that, you know, would take some people a few meetings to, to talk through and, and figure out, you know, all the different options and write them up. And that's something very concrete that can then be put back to the whole Badger and dig communities as to what path to go forward, being informed with, with the different options. To be clear, I don't think we need a bounty for it. I mean, I think we know we have those people here right now on the call that could do that. And and I'm and I'm I want to be very clear again. I'm very much still involved with this and be happy to do all these things. My my goal here is is actually to to move from being like kind of uh, de facto kind of leading this with Wasabi and others to 
creating a much more inclusive environment where like we give the chance to others. And so if that, if that's not, if, if, if what I'm hearing is people are saying like, Hey, we, we don't really need that. Then that's fine too. I guess I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how to best support it without, you know, just, just saying like, Hey, let's do this next, you know? Yeah, no, I agree that, um, I, you know, I would not try to get that bounty for myself or you, I don't think that would be appropriate, but like, Right, right. It's a way to sweeten the pie for like some community member who's listening here that wants to jump in the future of Dig and also, you know, realizes yeah. that doing this requires like more structured thinking and writing something up and, and doing some real work around it rather than just kind of like dashing off a comment or, you know, like I think, you know, it would be a way to kind of attract that more deeper engagement that we might be looking for. Bad or a 1500 Badger mentioned, and this is kind of what we've always gone back to is like, you know, the structure of a dig DAO if we went down that route. Um, I kind of see this as like a preliminary, w what I'm trying to explain or talk about right now, I think is almost like one or two steps prior to prior to a DAO. I, I feel like DAO is per like, a DAO is very permanent in nature. And so it's like, how do you kind of start problem solving collectively with more people? Um, and then deciding what the next round is and, and maybe that collective group of people decide that they want to go through a DAO and then that's that's decided. Um, but yeah, I think I mean, let me play this way. I'm I'm like this this community has been like insanely uh, supportive in so many ways. And so I'm very confident that we've got the right people that can do it. I just I'm probably more thinking from like the consulting side of my background, which is just like Hey guys, how can we structure this in a way to help streamline the problem solving? That's really probably my my primary focus at this moment. And maybe I'm overcomplicating it too. So I'm known to be one that does that at times. You know, let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you guys saw like an, an excited idea, somebody other than like you two really, Right, like actually come up with something new, come up with like an idea about dig or come up with like like a new input as opposed to like agreement in questions. Because to me, there was a lot of that two months ago and there's very little of that now, right? And the first step is to get more of that going on or else it's gonna be really hard to like form a committee that's gonna think about much other than just kind of how to do the work that as you already know how to do and nobody else does. I mean, I guess. in our last in our last call, uh, fifteen hundred, they had the idea for a, a complete overhaul of like the rebasing mechanism, so that it would be limited to LPs, so that it would stabilize. You know, I think there's been a lot of like very interesting proposals for for the way you know. And we had uh, I forget who it was, but someone else wrote a proposal for like an NFT game around Dig. So like, I think there's no shortage of ideas, but okay. there's a shortage of like scoping the ideas. In, so that they're achievable and like achievable within the budget and resources that we have. So how do we make that? Because that's the real question for me, right? If you want a council to form and if you want more engagement, right? Like, how do you make it so like 15, 1500 as an idea and like the next week we can discuss it and things are moving and we're moving forward and we're actually like seriously evaluating it and then deciding to do it or not do it. Or, you know, how can we make it so that somebody that has an idea for an NFT game, like, you know, I think it, it's more, and maybe this is what Wes was saying, right? But it's more of the process for like, when there is that energy capturing it and enabling it, right? And creating another Vipes or Wes or Wasabi, right? Like that's what we need to do in order to, to build like a strong community that's gonna lead this thing. And so I, I think that's the big question is how do we prompt that and then really nourish that? I think, Tritium, I think every, my, I think I think the answer is that, uh, for at least for me, if I am trying to like measure the merits of a, an idea on something that's achievable, not achievable, or worth doing, it's usually got to have the the underlying structure of like the the economics around it or the business plan around it to say like, okay, because like the lots of ideas are good. What what does it take to to execute an idea or like what's it going to require? I think is usually the question that allows me to measure the merits of ideas against others. And, and so what, 
can we do to better enable people to be able to go from you know an idea to a business plan because i i don't see people maybe we just need to say hey do it i mean maybe 1500 you have ideas so, right? like what would we need yeah, to do to enable you to say like okay this is my thing and like i really want to push it through and like let's talk about this more every week and move towards either deciding how to do it or not do it like that was kind of my uh, and Shreve, just to be very clear I, that was kind of my that, uh, uh, council's probably a, a very misleading term that was kind of the idea in terms of why i was trying to say like if we can get a group of people together then we can look at different ideas and then i would consider the value that i would try to provide to that group as being to try to formulate and build business plans around ideas so that we can start measuring the merits against different ideas that was kind of and like by moving options out to four months versus monthly it frees up my capacity to do that versus every two weeks doing modeling that was to be very clear that's kind of where i was going with that cool. because it's not it's not it, you know it, like you know as poe will tell you and as anyone else will tell you like writing proposals are for anybody to do but they're definitely not easy and i've made my fair share of mistakes and so you know for somebody just to come off the street and be like yeah let me write a proposal not to say you can't do it but i i feel like it would be definitely very helpful to have somebody there who can like help with that process and help ask the questions that need to be asked to say like okay that's a great idea but you know and this isn't saying someone else can't do this i guess my point is just saying like i would be yeah. there to help yeah okay so let's see what 1500 has to say like how could we enable you because if there's one person that i think is the most likely to actually take an idea and bring it to delivery and uh, 1500 seems to be the one that comes the closest. So like, what can we do to enable you to like take one of these things and, and really go? Yeah, I, I mean, to me, the first thing that comes to my mind is just like a dedicated like dev person, right? It seems like we have a lot of people around Dig that are, uh, you know, either on like the finance side, management side, uh, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, maybe it's just as simple as like getting a proposal written up on, um, you know, uh, what was it called? Like the, the GitHub or whatever that we have where we're, we're offering bounties and, um, you know, just putting a budget up of like, how much how much are we gonna put forward to like actually having a person that's uh, gonna come in and work on Dig? Um, yeah, cause I mean, it's like, again, we're not, we're not lacking in ideas. Uh, I think there's like at least two ideas that people have agreed on as being interesting that would really just require dev work. Okay, so then, what I'm hearing is to really inspire the community, right? We need to figure out how to enable dev work to get done. Um, I do, you know, the core team's pretty busy. It's hard to pull from there. We can do bounties, but for the bounties to work, like there has to be a pretty good scope, right? Which is like clear to an engineer and technical in its nature. And certainly like when we look at our bounties, right? ones that like point to code and like include a lot of detail tend to get delivered a lot better. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, exactly like we, you know, we don't have to change dig, right? Like we can, we can create a bounty that's like, you know, we want to make this, you know, we want to find a person that has the skills to come in and do this. Right. So like if we create the bounty that is a, you know, a, a pseudo project around making some manipulation to dig and then like, yeah, well then we find some person that proves that they can go in and look at the code and, and make changes to it. Right. And, and yep. then, then that person could then take on like a, a larger task. Yeah. I think that's our realization, right? Is that if you want to find a good developer, the best thing to do is structure a bounty that is all encompassing and kind of challenging. Right. And then even if you don't do it in the end, right, it's more about seeing, that somebody understood what you were saying that was able to deal with like the kind of noise and the realities of like, you know, like Badger, right? And, and get something done. And so I, you know, like to me, that sounds like a really good step is to like start to come up with some bounties, you know, like think about like what, what the end result is and do as much as you can. And then maybe we can try to get some of the, some of the core team to help like add some technical details and, and, and do that. And then like run it and see if we get some, you know, like, people that are like hungry devs that are really going to take the time to figure out what needs to happen, talk to people, engage and like, then do something. And then once you've got one, you can have them do more stuff, right? That's easy. This makes, uh, I'm totally in alignment with this. This makes sense. Um, you know, it could be, maybe it's just getting some people together that can help, you know, 
put together some ideas and formulate some bounties and go from there. Like we don't have to, again, I'm not trying to overcomplicate, just trying to help. That sounds like a really good start to me, right? I, 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 yeah, that's what I would do. And again, I just think it's about getting people engaged and making people see that like ideas can move forward and that like all of the resources are there and in building that like excitement. And, and I think 1500 is probably right that like what we need is to figure out how to engage the engineering world a little more um, and bounties are how we do that. So maybe we should spend some time trying to figure out how to get some dig bounties out and see what happens. But, yeah, I, I like that idea. Could we make a bounty oh. for like two or three different possible futures for dig? Like maybe there's a stability vault focused, there's a, uh, you know, changing the LP focused or even like the fork one, uh, the Olympus, like these are all kind of future lives for dig. and certainly like having the developmental resources is going to influence probably be the biggest influence over which path it goes in so let's see how, much, how well you guys can write this but like one way to write it would be as a hackathon right so okay here is what dig is here's all the details here's how these things perform here are the things that we've discussed here are the reasons for and against you know here's where we are at that then leaves a number of possible futures for dig right and as our hackathon we want you to pick one, implement it, you know, get some sort of a, an MVP or something up and running on testnet and then tell us like why you decided it and justify it. Right. And then you can accept a bunch of submissions and have like a few prizes and see, see what happens. So that would be one way to do it. That might be too complicated, uh, but we could try it. Right. And then the other thing to do would be to do like one, I'm not sure I would try to do like three hackathons with like three different dig futures right next to each other, all running at the same time. I think you'll just confuse people. What about just an open-ended hackathon for like, what can you build on top of dig or what can you dig 2.0? You'll get, you get garbage, trust me. You really have to be specific or else you get like a bunch of, so if you do <clears throat> something with a good specification, you get like senior devs that are like, this is a cool project with a good specification, I'm gonna build it, right? If you put something like, oh, we kind of like want this. And you know, if you're loose, then you get like a bunch of junior devs that are like, oh, I'm gonna try to learn something. And they spend, you know, like hundreds of hours hacking on the dig code and deliver something that usually doesn't make all that much sense. I mean, it can be good work. And, and, and you can see that like, like this person is learning a lot and they've explored our protocol and they understand dig better. And like a lot of like, it's good engagement, but it's not where you get a developer that's really gonna move the needle. Maybe starting point, we just figure out what the best, best path is here. And I mean, I'm not, I mean, we can continue talking about, it. we have time. I just said, if we, just thinking if we, if there's anyone that would like to be just a part of this and we could figure out, do we wanna go about it? Because I agree that whatever is written needs to be very, I mean, as specific as it can be um, to ensure probably the best outcome. So just doing that in and of itself, you know, probably, probably would be a few of us. Um, I probably would not be able to do it entirely by myself, just from the technical standpoint, but could probably get pretty close to it if someone else wanted to help out. You know, like, I think if you guys could write the, the maybe I, I'm being too agile about it, but like the user story, right? So like, what is the difference in the experience in Dig and get like the details? So like, and here's where the money is and here's where the LP is and here are like some contract addresses, right? And just kind of pull that together. Then, then I would be happy to like take a look at it and or run it past some developers and try to just like, add more like technical specification but i think what we need is like a really good clear user story that explains like what we want from like uh you know like not quite a pseudo code but like uh yeah both like a user level and a little bit about like the dynamics of it and then we can try to take it from there yeah i mean that could be a really easy thing that we do uh, you know, I don't know where we would do it, like the dig rebasing channel or something, but just, you know, anybody in this call, if you have ideas of like dig user stories, just like write them and then I could, um, I can compile them together. I, I mean, I, I just think like having a, a good, a good idea of what the community even thinks the dig user story is right now, right? Um, versus, you know, I, I think certain people have, have had different experiences with dig than others um and then right then then compiling that and getting an idea of like what the dig user story could turn into 
Um, and it, it, you know, the one things that we, we really don't ever talk about in these calls is like the badger boost, right? That that made a that made a pretty big difference in what dig is, right? Prior to the badger boost, um, I would argue that dig was kind of like you know off on its own doing doing its own thing. But now the badger boost has really um, given dig a utility, right? And and created a correlation between people locking funds in the badger protocol and and buying dig. That's a good point. I mean, I, I agree with you on that 1500. I, I I do agree that like we probably haven't talked enough about the boost and what and it's and how it's kind of brought dig back into um, a broader ecosystem and has created utility that was not really, um, you know, it was it was it's really never been talked about here. But I agree with you. I just uh, dropped in the chat. There were five ideas that we <clears> had <throat> in a, you know DeFi 25 years ago, but it was probably like. A month or two ago, we had another conversation about this, and there were a bunch of different community ideas. The NFT game, Polygon, that was uh, championed by Poopster and a couple others. So those are all in there. Um, this doesn't have the, the more recent things like the LP change and the the stability vault stuff. So these are other ideas for for kind of possible user stories. I appreciate that, Wasabi. Yeah, this is been... more mean, bounties, right? I mean, that's 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 another um thing like right with, with vipes and the the nft stuff right that started with someone creating art right that didn't start with like a developer or someone with an idea or something like that so you know one of the things like with the nft games right is we could put a put a bounty out there asking for artwork and if there's some artist that shows up that just starts producing tons of dig art right i mean i don't see anything wrong with that i i i don't think I don't think that'll work. I don't think you're gonna get like great dig art again doing art. Maybe, 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 maybe. But I, I think that comes more from the community, right? Like, I mean, Vipes came from the very heart of what Badger was, and he started by like sharing things with people on the community, and it was very like grassroots. Um, and I think that's pretty. I mean, that's that's my right. point. Is that you at least you write up these five proposals, and if you know, if energy gets behind one of them, uh, that's where it gets behind, right? Okay. So like the art, I guess the, the dig art bounty, maybe I wouldn't do on Gitcoin then and just kind of run on our Discord or run it a little closer to our community, but then maybe it makes more sense. Or sorry, not on Discord, on uh, Gitcoin. Well, yeah, the, the I point do think is like none of those five proposals get done without anyone coming in and doing the work, right? Like we, we, we can create an NFT game and someone can write the code for it, right? But then someone has to make all the NFTs, you know? So. I, I mean, it's just it's just an idea of like taking those proposals and breaking them down into what work actually needs to be done. Go for it. I'm, I I'm all there's, done. There's a, a, a request for feedback on the Badger Punks project right now. And I think, you know, a low hanging fruit would just be a, something to integrate the dig into that, like make it make there be like a, a dig trait, like the dig eyes or something. But there are other ways that we could just piggyback dig into this existing thing that's really cool and you know i think it's going to have a lot of traction agreed i just think dig needs to find a little bit of its own future too right like i think that to me that's what's missing with dig it's like frankly i the way i see it like we're running on this amp we're, we're running on like the most early of rebasing dynamics we've learned a lot like we've done a little bit with this drop thing which you know like in my view has like some good things and some bad things and it's probably not the optimal solution and you know maybe like balancer pools or i think there's a lot of more innovative and interesting things that have happened i think it's probably for you know like the a the market cap of the token and then like the cost to transact on eth like maybe it doesn't even make sense on ethereum anymore and it should move to another chain so like i kind of think maybe there's a lot of that stuff that really needs to be thought about and that, that's really going to move the needle on dig right and 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 it's also nice to continue to like link to what else badger's doing and that brings value but like dig needs to have its own vision yeah i think Tritium, I think that's that's kind of getting yeah that, that's kind of a challenge here. I think is that you, if we're if we're trying to come up with a new stage, we, we want it to be vision based rather than just kind of like hey, here's the next thing we're going to do. So without saying it, that's kind of been implied at least from my end. But I think you're correct. Anyone else have anything to add? I mean, I think I know it feels like we're kind of. I feel like this has been really helpful. I don't I don't know if anyone else 
feels the same, but um James Kendall, there's a little bit of discussion going on in the discussion channel. Vibes is talking a little bit about our uh, nobody knows what the dojo or dig is. It's pretty hard to like and I to broadcast way out. Uh the NFT rarity thing. Yeah, again, there weren't that many submissions, and they weren't one of them was okay, right? But it wasn't a very clear bounty. It what it didn't provide a whole lot of detail, right? Like that's what I mean. If the scope isn't clear, right, then you get much more novice people that are trying to learn as opposed to like professionals that are like, okay, like here's real work for me to do. Um and then here's this crucible reward program getting in touch with alchemist like that yeah i you know like yeah a diggy life fives yeah like i think all this stuff's good so then it's like getting many people working on all of these things and then also coming back to the dev stuff yeah okay, i mean i think we we've talked about doing dig infographics dig explainers but then also like the challenge with that is like okay i'm going to sit down and write a dig explainer but okay, the options program is now changing or like w when critical details of what, what's happening with DIG are changing so much, like it's hard to write something that's going to have much of a shelf life for that. So maybe like, I think definitely like a critical decision factor in whatever we do with DIG needs to be like how simple it is to understand and communicate and removing levels of complexity is the way to go in my opinion. But um, but I think it's hard to to switch into like, explaining dig mode when we're not sure about the you know the basic mechanics are going to change or it's going to suddenly be on polygon or what yeah, i mean we we've kind of gone down i mean like i probably haven't shared this entirely with everybody but like wasabi myself i'm nefarious we've, we've gone down like tons of different paths i mean we've met with people for hours to do infographics and then they maybe flaked out and then we've met with devs even people that have been like hey like i'd love to help contribute let's and we've we've actually you know framed out like what a potential options site could look like if we wanted to build a more robust robust options program like the challenge with all this is just that I without just that kind of yeah i just don't think options is very visionary right i think it's like something no no i agree like, it's funny it's, still, visionary and it's not visionary i agree with you in my view the story of options is like we were gonna do claws with uma and then we didn't and then we kind of felt bad and we needed and then at the same time they were doing this kpi thing and like everybody got really excited and it's like okay cool like we can come together and do this thing right and then it didn't work and then it didn't work and then you know like actually we put a bunch of money in lp and we did a bunch of other things that did work and then be and while we pumped a bunch of money into these options and i think we probably gave away way more dig than we had to because i think the other things actually probably worked better right and then now we've just been talking about it so long that like we keep coming back to like how do we make you know the question is how do i get like something other, how do i get yield from dig right that's what people are fundamentally needing and I feel like we're like stuck in thinking about options. And I, to me, it was like, not, that wasn't even like, that didn't come from vision, right? That just kind of like came out of nowhere. And then, and then we like worked really, really hard for a long time to get it to like kind of work and spent most of the treasury in order to actually make it happen once. Right. So I don't, it, it to me, like, I, I'd like to see us moving in other directions, but again, I'm just here to like make noise and advise, right? You just do whatever you want and I'll try to support it. What if, you know, there's there is that uh, thing on Twitter of like the guy that has a hamster deciding his trading strategy. What if we had like a dig hamster that like got one type of food if it was a positive rebase or like like something that could be just like silly and memeable? Like I could imagine that going viral in a way that like a complicated options uh, thing couldn't. Hey guys, I just want to reiterate, reiterate some stuff I tossed in the chat. I, and you know, I think there's a lot of you know talk about fun, cool things, and even like the the hackathon stuff is all great. But a lot of that's like implementation, and I think you know, in, in my opinion, um, the most pressing thing is just to figure out like like what do people want want dig to be, um, and then we can kind of move from there. Like we can do a lot of stuff that's like supportive or brings attention to it. You know, you talk about um writing up explainers but like you know to be very like, clearly like honest like i wouldn't know how to explain dig right now necessarily 
um, as far as like if people were to ask me like, all right, what's the long term goal of of Dig? What's the you know, what are the long term mechanics? And you know, true to your point, like you know, the uh, options were a you know an interesting experiment, um, and the goal was you know not that okay, this is something you know maybe that could be long term, but obviously isn't going to be the only mechanic. We were hoping that like the stability vault, maybe some other stuff. Pops up. So, in, in in my opinion, and I didn't catch the whole first part of this call, but um, I think the most important thing is to get the community uh, in a place where it can vote and weigh in, whether it's certain Discord channels or breaking out another way to you know vote in like a new snapshot or something like that, and then just figure out okay, firstly, like what's the long term goal? Is it to continue as a fully rebasing asset, um, and uh, that's com- that's one hundred percent unbacked um and then go from there okay well then we do, do we need to move it to another chain do we need to figure out other mechanics do we need to do like a one-time mint event to give the treasury more more funds to kind of you know have more ammo um those are implementation details after the vision um other thing could be okay well let's figure out let's look at some of these new mechanics that seem to work better like fey and frax or whatever um that are partially backed is that worthwhile is that what the, t- the crew wants to do sure Great, we can do that, um, but that's going to take you know research and you know talking to those teams and yada yada yada. Um, but it's at least a way uh, of a step forward. Um, then there's okay, let's you know pivot it into something that's you know in the same vein, but but kind of completely different. Like a you know like the Olympus option that basically consumes Dig, and it's basically like the community pivoting the asset into something different. Like like those are like high level. Like okay, let's go in that direction, and then we can do fun art things or, you know, put, put together bounties or, or whatever. Um, you know, I, I just want to make sure I, my, this is all my opinion, you know, things can go where they need to, but that the most pressing thing is like, all right, we're going to do these options. We're going to kind of keep it status quo. And that's going to get us a couple months of hopefully keeping dig more like status quo. And like in this time frame, we need to figure out the community needs to kind of settle on like, all right, where do we want to take this? Um, what do we want to do with this community, with this asset, um, and go from there? I'm, you know, bullish on the community and bullish on the people that have been involved so far to to figure out something really great. Um, it's just let's coordinate and organize to make that decision. Yes, Justin Harrison, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, perfect. Uh, Kupa here. I've been um, following Dig since February. Uh, was Earlier job for Badger, so just trying to get some context here. Um, but I've been what crypto, DeFi, yield farming. Uh, my latest rabbit hole has been NFTs. I'm looking at everyone's profile pictures and I'm saying, should Dig have a use case for NFTs or at least obtaining NFTs for Badger? Because I think their use case for Dig should be bringing value to Badger. Um, but I do think, and I'm just looking at the uh, profile pictures people have of. Uh, what is it, a uh, crypto punk influence? But I'm loving the dig, uh, the dig pictures. So uh, what I'm saying is, I think we should create an NFT of dig punks backed by a crypto punk itself. So if we can obtain a punk, lock it up, lock up the value, attach it to, you know, the badger. But remember, the whole idea here is is Bitcoin on Ethereum as well, too, correct? And I'm just I mean, wondering if that NFT team, if we have thought about actually uh, as a demo of collecting NFTs that are not only valuable, but it also allows us to make an impact as far as, you know, range, reach, uh, marketing without trying. Um, and, and I know Punk is big, so maybe we can even scale it down lower to like the ETH range, just one ETH. Uh, uh, and I, I don't know who else has gone down these rabbit holes the last month or two, so I can't really speak that heavy on NFTs. But it is having a use case of, you know, attacking value in other places. So I really want to not strip that from Dig, but I want everything that Dig has to stay. And I just want to build more use cases on top of it, is what I'm saying. Because uh, And this comes from someone who's not only earned Dig, but also has you know, purchased Dig uh, multiple times. So um, I don't know. Um, you know, give context there without really feeling anything or anything like that. I'm really up to consensus of what NFT do we want to obtain? Uh, that actually, you know, not just hype, maybe hype, you know, something that we're going to hold as a DAO because I'm seeing DAOs 
speak up over there that are looking for things that we can offer. And then we're trying to do is connect dots, NFT, yield farming, uh, DeFi, crypto, um, that miss anything, DAOs. And really just connect all those dots all together and hopefully let Badger be or dig themselves and will be the one that, that does that. Sorry for taking so much time here, but one you know, of plant those seeds and let someone else take an idea and just run with it. Because I'm not saying I had the idea, but maybe collectively we put our ideas out there and they're just seeds, but they might grow some of those waters and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just build on top of that really quickly. I mean, the, I think what I heard you say, or an interesting idea on that was the concept where you take a punk and you mint another punk out of it using uh, some data. D- d- so I'm looking at right, you. right, right, right. Yeah. So, like, I'm not sure that like we can keep people's punks, right? Because you say, hey, like, burn your like no, no, 20 not their punks, crypto punk. The but, 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 but what would be interesting is to have like we're we're working on these badger punks, right? What would be interesting is to have some sort of like a, another NFT punk machine where basically you took any kind. So there's like crypto kitties, right? There's like a bunch of different punk knockoffs. So basically you could feed in a punk NFT that you owned as source and pay some dig and come up with like some glorious dig punk, right? Which maybe was then like a modification or added like another <coughs> onto it and then do that in a limited run. And like that actually, and then you could like burn the dig and it would cause it to rebase up that actually, I mean, I, I would encourage you to think about that more on chat, but I actually think there's something okay, like definitely. there. Oh, yeah, and the last part of that was game fly because I'm seeing gaming coming into this, and I don't know if anyone has touched that project kills, but I did see Badger in there, so I was really trying to figure out what is Badger's point of that. And lastly was that pop artist who was burning in the fees as a use case, so uh, there was different functions in there. It's a big rabbit hole, not the place we're going on here, but I'm trying to really make them more of a gaming type of uh, use case, not only, but Additionally to what it's already doing, and I'm saying I got the full answer. I like where you went there with it because I was just giving an idea. We took it even further than I even thought it. So and that's really what I was looking for. Appreciate that. And if anyone is in the trees, I would like to just kind of start a dialogue because I'm still learning those blocks. Instead of doing all the ideas over there, and don't even get beef, don't get anything we're doing. They're really trying to figure out things. So, you drop into the dojo and, and like okay. chat that more like that, but there's some interesting ideas there that, that are, are worth exploring more. Definitely. I appreciate it. See you the awesome. Thanks for that. So we're, we're at an hour. I actually have to, to jump off now. Um, if people want to continue uh, hanging out and chatting, that's fine. But I think, so let's see the action items. Uh, we you're going to look at the balance sheet for dig and, um, get some stuff out, out so that we can make the voting decision on the BIP. And then in terms of the next steps for the, the future of dig bounty stuff, I mean, I'm happy to kind of take, try to synthesize the earlier five ideas that were written in the chat and then the stuff that's come out now, the stuff between 1500 and, and this uh, punks idea and uh, just go back through all the chats and find any other um, ideas that have, that have gone out there. and then. Uh, if anyone wants to get on a call with me, me and Wizik or, or whoever, I think, you know, it would be great to have some, some core Badger team, uh, who knows about kind of like scoping the dev stuff to, to get these into like concise little paragraphs, um, and make sure that they're achievable. Then we can share that back and, and use that as kind of like a, 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 uh, template for, for figuring out the next steps. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I, I I'll provide some, I'll provide a quick update on the balance sheet here shortly. I'm actually uh, going through and updating some things in it so that it reflects the correct amount. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, yeah, Wasabi, well, happy to to take a look with you um, or weigh in for what's needed to, I guess, get them a little more not fully dev ready, but <laughs> you know, yeah, interpret. Yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely like a missing link, right? Because we don't want to just be writing checks of dev time that are not achievable. We want to make sure that they're scoped out and and make sense. So um, I got to hop off, but thanks everybody. And if you are a community member and listening to this and want to be part of that conversation, just DM me and we'll figure out, figure out a time and we'll, we'll share those discussions. I mean, we want to make sure that everyone who wants to 
raise their hand and, and be part of this uh, can can do that. So thanks everyone. I'm off now if anyone wants to, to keep chatting, go for it.